So hi everybody. Um, I think I want what I want to talk about today. Maybe we'll conclude. Maybe it might go on more than one week. Um, but what I want to talk about is a very important question, and I want to give a little history to understand how did the world get this crazy, and what can I do about it. That's the topic I want to discuss. It may. How the world got so crazy may take more than one session. As, <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. But, but I, I need to give a little history here. We've done this a little bit before because it's very important to understand the parameters, understand where we are, because every person lives in their own little bubble. It's a blip. You know, a person lives 100 years. It's still a blip in history. It's nothing. So you have to get a broader view of God's grand plan. And what's my role in that? And where is the world going? And when I think about like, you know, the philosophy of the world today, which I don't know if you all realize it because we all grew up with this from the time of Darwin, as, as Darwin's friend Aldous Huxley said, Darwin was the first one to give atheists some way to explain their beliefs. It justified a whole world that before was not discussed because before that there was idolatry, they believed in different gods, but not to believe in, a, in some being that was the cause of this world was a foolish belief. So whether or like, not you like Darwinism or you subscribe to evolution, as we discussed, evolution means a lot of different things. And, you know, we can discuss that as we go. But whatever it is, that's not a very long time. So people believed in a different world, which had its own problems and in certain ways worse. But we're all in the world of random. And that's frightening because you have to understand the, 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 the modern person who does not believe in God, and we'll talk about the, the mistaken beliefs in God, believes the world is random. So you can do crazy things because the, the, everything is purposeless. I mean, I honestly don't know how a person who believes the world is random, how, we, how they get up in the morning. I don't, I don't understand it. And, 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 and therefore, you know, I, unfortunately, these terrible tragedies of people that are crazy walking in and shooting people, like for a normal sane human being, you can't imagine that. They start thinking about like, well, what are they thinking? If the world out there believes that is nothing, no rhyme and reason, and the only reason why they act proper is because they have law that forces them to or because they they want their get their physical pleasures every day to go out but most people don't don't get their their dream of their pleasure and so their life is clearly meaningless that's a very dangerous world so i want to explain go back in history from the beginning the process of the crazinesses that happened before and to the craziness of today and ask ourselves, what could we do about this? How do we have to understand way the world improperly sees the world and what's the proper way? Okay, that's what I wanna do. All right, so let's start. Back to, this I shared with you once before, we're going back to the beginning, the beginning of creation. Okay, God created the world from, although there were many pairs of animals, right? There were male, females of all the different breeds to procreate. But intentionally, God created the world from one couple to understand the importance of a human being. That the entire world comes out from one unit, one couple. That means every individual is considered to be a world unto themselves. And that's the famous teaching that if you, you kill someone, you destroy an entire world. If you save a person, you save an entire world. Okay, that, that's a, just to understand, because we're, we're gonna talk about people's insanities, that's a, that idea, that Jewish idea, which again, when I say Jewish, I mean true ideas from, from the source, that is 
maybe in the world today, that's like acceptable. We can kind of certain maybe way people can, you have to understand how radical that is in the ancient world, okay? Like, you know, in America, we talk about the Greeks, the great Greeks, the Greeks, wow. You know, they were the founders of the philosophy. If you lived in Athens and the child was born with any kind of deformity, what they do? They killed the child. That's what they did. That's that was advanced Athenian belief. They're not going to keep these burdens on society. They don't match up to the beauty of what the physical form that we Greeks determine. So, for the Jewish world to say that every person is an entire world, people today have made problems with it. But but there's a receptacle to to realize. Hmm, something true, something great in a human being. That's why when you have, let's say, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go off a little bit here because the world is so crazy. <laughs> I just, I just have to really share with you. So you have, let's say, pita and, and like, yes, in the Noahide commandments is a commandment not to eat animals before they are properly killed. And, 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 and then you can eat them because it's cruelty, which means in the Noahide code, in the most basic fundamental reality, you have to be loving to everything, to animals. You cannot be cruel to anything. But when a person has a belief that people and animals are equal, that's a dangerous reality. Okay, we'll explain it more. We'll explain it in a bit. We'll explain how it should be. But I want to start back at the beginning. So we have Adam and Eve are created. There are many, many other creations, other other creatures, a tremendous plethora of creations, but they're all multiples. Adam and Eve are created, and they are the beginning of humanity as we know it. As I said before, we're not talking about whether there is in the man or not, I'm talking about the first human beings created with the soul. Now, so now you have Adam and Eve and people misunderstand it. I mean, they, they think they're frolicking in the garden and they're like, people who read Genesis do not understand it at all. Genesis is, is forbidden from teaching it in certain ways because it all is talking about a very hot, much different spiritual reality than the reality of today and so it's very complicated to speak and teach, teach about and that's why there are many rules on how you teach the story teach real the, the inner meanings of what the story of genesis is but the the the, the common belief that adam and eve are like two kids frolicking around don't, don't know anything that's completely false that's not true that's completely not reality adam and eve were prophets that was god's handy work Okay, uh, we can't we can't fathom. Adam and Eve contained in them all of the souls. You all were contained in the essence of Adam and Eve. Okay, they contained all of humanity of what was going to happen. So how do you go? Okay, so I'm not talking about the sin of Adam and Eve now. Uh, that's not my purpose of my topic, but but. What happens is, is that how do you go now from that, even though they fell and they, and, and they did fall and reality did change, we moved in from this supernal type of reality to our present day reality, that did happen. But how, but they were still tremendously righteous people and prophets. How do we come now to where the world starts going off? So I shared this with you once before, and it's frightening because only three generations in from Adam. Adam, he has a son named Chase, Seth in English. And then by the, his safe, one of Chase's his children, Enosh, by that third generation, there begins the concept of idolatry in the world. So already from early on, the world's going off. So what is idolatry? I want to explain this a little bit. And I want to, first in today's session, give you some of the reasons why the world go, went nuts and goes nuts. Idolatry is one of the seven Noahide laws, obviously. It is 
one of the laws a Jew has to give his life for, if he's told to serve an idol or to die, then he gives his life for. Um, and Maimonides explains that the early idolaters were not stupid. He says the early idolaters, the reason why they, they did idolatry is because they had a messed up idea in their head. What was the idea? It's like this. If the king would come, you would honor the king. If the king sent his officers, you would honor the officers. The sun and the moon and everything in the world is doing the bidding of God. And therefore, there is a place to recognize that. And that's not such a crazy idea. It, it, it is in the sense that where it goes off. But the idea of a person being thankful for the things he has, the physical things that he has. You know, uh, the story when, when Saul was chasing David and David cut the ends of his clothes. And the sages said, no, that wasn't the right thing to do. Ah, he was trying to show Saul, I could have killed you and you think I'm, the whole story there, those who know. But the, the relating of clothes, you have to say, wow. These are things that God gave me of value. And ladies and gentlemen, it's so crucial because like people, people who don't realize this don't re relate to the world in, in, in a proper way. And this is what I said you was hinting at earlier when I, when I said about the idea of, of, of Pito. You have to understand something. The human being is the pinnacle of creation. When Adam saw all of the creations, he said, he sang this psalm, it's in Psalms. He says, come, let us praise God together. Now, that means a human being is supposed to see the things that are created in the world as vehicles to elevate creation. You have to use the world for a good purpose, not abuse the world. So, yes, this is where people have, you know, like a lot of the bad ideas have a grain of truth to them. There is a grain of truth that, that you're supposed to take the world to use it, not to abuse it. That's certainly true. But what happens is, is that Adam saw himself as the pinnacle of creation and everything God gave him, he was going to elevate. That's why there's a law in the Torah. You're not allowed to chop down a fruit bearing tree for no reason. It's destruction. You can't destroy. How can you destroy something like that? It's a beautiful thing God gave us in the world. So what happens is now we have a generation that starts with this little crazy idea of, okay, wait a minute. We have to thank the sun, thank the moon, thank the this, thank the that. And I don't know what they looked like um, in the original mistake. Maybe they didn't look so bad. Maybe they kind of looked like, you know, very... Uh, I mean, it's in a derogatory way, kind of like hippies. I don't know, they kind of maybe they look like, you know, people like, oh, we want to tune in and, and you know, thank everything. And maybe maybe it was something, because because Maimonides says that the beginning of it was a mistake. But where did it evolve to? It evolved to what's called idolatry. What's idolatry? Idolatry is all of a sudden the sun, the moon, or whatever force is seen as being separated from the source, from God. It has its own power, whatever it is. Whatever it is. And we mentioned before, the idea in Christianity of the devil fighting God. That, 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 that to us is, is, is a, a complete impossibility. God is omnipotent in every way. Anything else has any power, that's called idolatry. What do you, what, how, is that, how can that be? So the people started maybe with a mistake, but it evolved into a place where they started saying these things had their own separate power. Yeah, yeah, there's a supreme God. We don't even disagree with that. But these things have their own separate power. Idolatry. Now, I want to explain this to you. This we talked about once before. This is just fascinating. I, I, I've shared this, but, but it's important to see in the context I want to build this for the next couple of weeks. So there is now different traits that people have and different traits that we have inside of us that could really mess us up. Okay. 
there is three traits that there are three traits that if it, that not dealt with properly, they're going to destroy a person. And they, those are unbridled desire, jealousy, and honor, chasing after honor uncontrollably. And as you can see, all these things may have a place, right? Right? Can, should I have desire for things that are good for me? For sure. Person who has no desire to do anything, he's apathetic. So what does it mean unbridled desire? What does it mean that, that a person has uh, um, a, um, wants honor? Everyone, it's, it's natural. People, you know, I have a friend, David Kaplan, and one time he did this, he did this thing in a, in, in a, in a lecture. I, I thought it was brilliant. He had one of the students walk outside to go outside. And then I want you, I'm going to call you back in to come into, in, in, you know, in, in back in the class in a minute. And he told everybody in the class that when the student comes back in, I want you to start clapping for him. Just start clapping for him. And then like stand up and clap for him. The guy went out and he came in and we started clapping. And it, it was it was a natural reaction. He couldn't control it. So I was smiling from ear to ear. And when we stood up, he's like, wait, you know this was a setup. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that he must have told us to do this, but you, you, you couldn't you couldn't stop because there's a place where if I honor you and I, and I and I recognize you, it's a natural place in a person. A human being needs it, and yet when it's when it's misused, you're in danger zone. Same thing by desire. If there was no desire, nothing would happen. Everything would stop. There was no desire. Yeah, what the heck? What I care? So he did say, yeah, no, no, who did say he died. Who would go to the job? Who would go to work? No, I, don't, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. So, but misuse, terrible. Jealousy also is a way to have positive jealousy. If you see someone who's doing good things and you want to be like them, that's going to be very good. So these three things, and I think I shared this with you one time, are lined up with the three possible relationships we have. A person to themselves, a person to other people or things in the world, and a person to God. Right? Uh, those are relationships I have. Do I, can I control myself or do I eat like, a, you know, like an animal? Because I like the pleasure. I can't stop. It means I have no control over myself. How do I relate to other people? Okay, do I relate to them in the proper and improper way? How do I relate to God? These are the three relationships, and these are the three areas that things go awry because there's a place in a person. This is very key here because, as you guys know, many of you grew up in, in Christian societies, they've taken Jewish concepts and altered them to the point that they have no connection to what is correct. The original sin idea is some aberration of a Jewish concept and makes a person dirty and bad. We don't say that. However, we do say a person has in them a side to them that wants to do the elevated things and has a side in them that is supposed to challenge them. Supposed to challenge them, literally. So, for example, if, if, I, if I'm a person who is, um, I'll give you an example. One of, my, one of my children, thank God, is a very a big Torah scholar. And when he was a kid, he loved candy. Loved candy. So what did I do? I gave him candy. He'd go learn Torah. Candy, candy. So, all right. Now, if he would get, if he would stay in that, and at 30 years old, he's like, you know, hey, can, can I have a Kit Kat? You know, then, then we got a problem on our hands. But, but if he transfers that desire and that, that wanting something sweet to something that is now spiritual, he's taking the same trait that could knock him off, and now it's making him great.
That's the negativity we have, what we call the eight Sahara. The ability to go and to give us a pushback is our need to overcome that. That's what it is. That's why we have it. Not because you're intrinsically bad. That's wrong. It's because the higher part of yourself needs to be brought out by overcoming in your effort the challenges you have. So every person has a place of jealousy. A person has a place of honor. Every person has a place of desire. How do you deal with those is going to determine if you become a great person or a terrible person. That's really what's going to happen. Now, let me explain today, I want to explain to you about this generation of idolatry. Because idolatry sounds so weird. We don't really understand this. And the reason we don't understand this is because the desire for idolatry, it says the sages prayed, it was removed from the world. There is no real desire for idolatry. It doesn't exist. That's why we don't relate to it. Talk about idolatry, you can like, uh, who, who, who wants to go to but in one time in history, when mankind was, you know, chasing after idolatry, there was a powerful desire for it. I'm going to explain to you what it was. Now, i ask you a question. Let's say a person has some kind of, I don't know, superstition, but he has some kind of power he thinks he's going to manipulate some spiritual force is going to manipulate and he's going to get what he wants. Now, why would this person do that? Let's say, let's say he's not an idiot. Let's say he's some kind of black magic guy. Why would he go and try to manipulate a force to get it instead of communicating with God and getting from the source? Why would, why would he want to do that? It's weird. I mean, we don't believe, obviously, it's idolatry for us to believe the power can give him anything that, that the power can give him anything other than what God wants to give him anyway. That's, that's idolatry. But however, I'm, I'm asking a different question. I'm saying, wait a minute. Why does he want to do that? You know what the answer is? Because when you talk to God, you can't fool God. You can't manipulate God. The belief of these idolaters were, I'm going to do something. I'll make an incantation. I'll do something. And, and they weren't just idiots. They were people who had certain spiritual powers and black magic things they knew how to do. But if I manipulate this force in the world and I can get what I want to get, do you know what I've done? I've become God myself. I don't need to, I don't need to come on to ask God. Right, because I could do something and get what I want without God. And you all know the story of the of the Tower of Babel. That was the idea. Tower of Babel, he built a giant tower and said, "God, you stay there and leave us alone. We want to manipulate our world to get what we want." So what happens is the person has a problem with honor. Instead of honoring God and realizing I am an extension and, and everything I have is because what God gave to me, instead of taking that approach versus I want to be God myself, which is what, what the snake said to, to Adam. The serpent said to Adam, he says, you eat the tree, you'll be decent, kill a king, you'll be like God. So that is a power in the person. Everybody wants honor. It, it's, it's natural. I told you, my friend, when we clapped for that guy, he was smiling ear to ear. Everyone needs to be recognized. But there's a place where that honor, when I don't connect it to where it really belongs. Like, I, I, I kind of don't, you know, like, like haughty, I mentioned, mentioned a few weeks ago, haughtiness is a funny thing. I, I don't understand people that are haughty who are beautiful or smart. That one I don't get at all. Like, I don't get it. Like, you didn't make yourself beautiful. You didn't do anything. You, you were born that way. <laughs> that should be just a big thank you. <laughs> like, why, why would you think you're above everybody? It's, it, it's weird, but that's the way people are. But, you know, haughtiness is the place where it's like you're not realizing that what you have is coming from the source. You want to be that, that power. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I want to share this with you. I understand this. This is a place in all of us like that. 
That's the negativity that you have to get rid of. And we can. And we can. But that's, that's a real negativity where a person in a certain place wants to take credit for themselves to the exclusion of their source that gave it to them. And that, and that really is the root of idolatry. So the world from Adam starts going off the rails pretty early. It's like, you know, like a lot of people want to be self-employed. And I understand that. You know, I, I, I definitely do. And I understand that. And it's a real, but it's a real power. It's a real, it's a real, it's a real emotion in a person. And in a certain way, it's a good emotion that I want to build, I want to do, I want to be me. But it has a very, very dangerous part that leads the world in a crazy direction. So what happened was three generations in is already idolatry. And people are born to their own power. Now we have a generation of the flood. And here is illicit relations just the pleasure that they were having they couldn't control it anymore and that's all they wanted and you could see that you could see how a person i mean you know uh, it's funny because in america we're like you know I, I i i don't know i don't know what the situation is now like i i, I kind of remembered when i was a kid i used to live in manhattan i went to school in manhattan and i remember not having air conditioning i remember just being really hot in the city I said to my wife this week, I said, D -d 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 does that happen in America? It's like everyone have like central air conditioning. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I get the impression that everyone has it, you know, but like that, that's kind of somewhat recent. I mean, you know, 34, 30 years ago, that wasn't even, you know, even so, but everyone, everyone expects and everyone wants these comforts. Comforts, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, it's really comforts are a danger. See, the opposite of pain is not comfort. As a pain is made pleasure. A comfort is kind of like, could be a very uh, slow death. It could just be a place where a person is just like, you know, and, and that's why comfort sometimes, the comforts that we have in today's society, sometimes they, they numb us to really getting to things that are, are, are valuable because we're comfortable. But a person who gets, and it's a natural part, from the time you're a baby, first thing is, and this is, this is, this is the problem. The problem is, is that you don't get, we don't get our sense of self and understanding until we hit some age of adulthood. 12 for girls, 13 for boys, um, to maturity, a certain, certain level. And then, then it still develops from there. But, but as a child, you know, today, you know, and Rod smiled because today it's, it's like a 50 again, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, so what happens is, is that, is, but, but when you're, as soon as you're born, you need to nurse. And you don't care that your mother has not slept, you know, and she's been up all night. You could not care less because you need that. And that is a certain physical pleasure a person needs. So you grow up with that. And that's where I was telling you before, the ability for the higher part of ourselves to come in is so crucial because you've had years of just being a kid and candy, candy, whatever it is that you want, because that your physical body is dictating what's happening until you have the ability to help to a higher part of yourselves. So the generation of the, of, of the flood, it says they had all the good things they wanted. And they got into their pleasure. They couldn't get out of it. Okay, that's what it was. It was just like kept feeding the pleasure. Pleasure is a is a is a is a very fascinating thing. I always tell people if you notice, there's a very fundamental difference between physical pleasures and spiritual pleasures. Physical pleasures all work the same way. What happens? You're hungry. You eat. You're full. You just add a giant meal. The guy says, here, have another steak on the house. Can't do it because you don't want it because it's all the same illusion in a certain way. You're empty, full, empty. And once you're full, you don't want it. Spiritual pleasures are not like that. There is no limit to that. Guy, person says, I love someone. 
You can't say, well, I love them enough. I don't have to love them anymore. You can love them more. And that's not, it's not based on that system. But the, the, the addiction of the pleasure, that really is a place where already very soon on in the world, the world went crazy in its pleasure. And that was generation of the flood and that fell out there. And then the, the last one, and I'm not gonna go through which generation is a little complicated, but I wanna get the idea. The third idea is the idea of jealousy, which really we even see from Cain and Abel from the very beginning, a very, very fundamental thing. The jealousy is a breakdown between man and his fellow man. So what happens? I Jealousy is a crazy thing. Jealousy doesn't mean that I see someone have something and I want to attain that also. It means I actually, it bothers me that they have it. You know, I see Ronald's motorcycle. I'm like, wow. If I say I want most like that, that's not jealousy. But if I would say, which I'm not, I'm not Ronald. I'm not, I'm not begrudging you the motorcycle. If I said, why does he have a motorcycle? I don't want that. That, that's jealousy. That's a crazy thing. That means already I cannot relate to people. There's no room for me and them in the same world because I need to be the center. I don't see a unity of people. That's Cain and Abel. It's also one of the generations later. So the very beginning of time, the world was already messed up from early on. And this is what I shared one time. And next week, we're going to talk about Christianity. We'll talk about Islam and, and the evolution of the world further. But from the beginning of time, from Adam's beginning of time, where the world should have been the right path, the negative impulses that people had to control, their unbridled desire, their jealousy, or their wanting of honor from themselves, not for the source, all of that made the world go bonkers and people were barbarians and this is very hard to imagine because and i'm going to get to this not today god i'm going to get this hopefully in the next week or two the world today is in one way much more civilized but there's parts of the world that are even more nutty than they were then there's they're, 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 the thinking has gone totally blue it's crazy but the world in the early stages of the world, people became barbarians. As you see in the Torah, they were sacrificing their own children. It, it was nutty stuff. Go look at the go look at the uh, the, the, the Incas, uh, you know, uh, uh, ruins. You'll see what was happening. They killed human sacrifice, and that's where Abraham comes in. And as I said to you many times, in the early years, Adam had students. He had his righteous son, Chase, and Chase had his righteous son. There was a, there was a group of cadre of people who were righteous, who kept within the system. But the world in itself was going crazy and became barbaric. And that's where Abraham came in. And that's really why Abraham is now the revolution. Because he looked at the world, he grew up. A, he didn't grow up like the other people. He didn't grow up who, who the righteous people were all in one little clique. Abraham's father was an idol merchant. He was the advisor for the king. He was the top idol maker. He subscribed to this whole worldview of power, and control, and we'll control it ourselves. And Abraham looked at the world and said, "This is not it." And he said. There's a God, there's a source. Once he hit that, everything opened up. There's a source. And God is creating us for purpose of good. And that's how he made his revolution. He said, come into my house. He opened his tent on all four sides. Come into the house and I want to give you. People said, you're going to give us? Why are you going to give us? People want to steal from us. Right? Because the world was full of theft. No, God gave me. And I'm emulating God. I'm going to give to you. And people were, were, were flipped out. They said, wow, thank you. And they said, don't thank me. Thank the source who gave it, who gave it to all of us. So this revolution came into the world where all of a sudden it was the opposite of before. It's not about my honor and my, I, this guy's idolatry. There's one source who's, who's giving. And he's giving everything, his kindness. I don't have to be jealous of this guy. 
And I don't, I don't have to grab everything for myself. I can give to other people. And since God is giving in this way of goodness, so the world's not about grabbing your own pleasure. It's about something much higher. These were the elements of the world when the world became a barbaric place. And Abraham came into the world to start bringing the cure. That was the cure. And what the whole world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I open the questions, that's going to be our job. We got to figure out here the, the, the continuing the legacy, which we're going to see the legacy of Abraham. And next time I'm going to get into the, the other mistakes that came out in, in the children from the point of Abraham. But the first half of the world is the first 2,000 years. Abraham is born in the year 1948 to the creation, to, to, to the creation of Adam. So the, so the first 2,000 years of the world, of civilization as we know it, from the time of Adam, it was bar, people became barbarians, worshiping all over the place, comes along this guy Abraham, and he has a whole different view of the world. And he starts a revolution. And that's why all the story, they try to kill him because he really is preaching something that the leaders and the kings and the power people don't want. They don't want a world that is, they're not in control, like God's in control. They don't want a world of goodness where God is giving to everybody. And they don't want a world where there's a higher purpose and not just grabbing my stake. That was the revolution. That was Abram coming into the world. It, it was set up that way. His soul had to come into the world at that time to give birth to the Jewish people, to give revelation of the Torah to bring the world out of the doldrums and the negativity. And as I said to you before, it's definitely the most successful revolution ever. And next time we're going to see the new ways that it went haywire in our in, in times from Abraham. I'm going to get up to the times of today. That's my thought for the day. It's a lot of information. I'm going to open it up to questions and ideas.